Praise God. Hello, my wonderful friends. Megas with you on this beautiful day in Asha. And today's message is Jesus and the fig tree. In this video, you will understand the mysticism, the code written in this parable. Now, you might be wondering, why did the prophets write in code and speak in parables? You have to realize the times and the society. If they would stone their children for being disrespectful, sell their daughters as sex slaves. A prophet didn't just come out and say, your idea of God is wrong. They would not just sit down with you and reason this thing out. So they had to do it in this way. And so today's parable is found in Matthew uh, chapter 9, verse 17. And it says, in the morning he left Bethany. Now, Bethany is translated in two different ways here as house of dates and house of affliction. You got to realize this analogy is talking all about mind right now. So he is leaving affliction and in the morning, okay, the morning star comes, the light drives away darkness. It then, it then says in uh, verse 18 that he became hungry. Now he's not referring to uh, food and mouth. Uh, just if you look back a few chapters before that in Matthew 5, it says, Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be satisfied. And then in verse 19, it says he saw a lone fig tree by the way. Now I want you to keep an uh, ear open as we talk about the way, because that's what this message is about. By the end of this message, you will know the way. You will understand the three days. So uh, Jesus saw a lone fig tree by the way and found nothing on it but leaves. This is a representation of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He said to it, no longer shall there ever be any fruit from you. And at once the fig tree withered. It's the Christ consciousness showing you to eat only from the tree of life, not from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. My friends, a fig blossoms from the inside. You will produce what is inside your heart and mind. The loving Jesus, the Prince of Peace, did not curse an innocent living thing. He removed the tree of wrong thought, wrong mind. Uh, before, you thought maybe it felt good to sit in the shade of the leaves of this tree, but now in the Christ consciousness, you see that that tree was keeping you from the light. Its fruit may have tasted sweet in your mouth, but it would rot in your belly. Jesus looks at this tree that has been deceiving you, hurting you, producing poisonous fruit that destroys the life of you and your children. And he speaks to this bad tree and says, let no fruit grow on you again. And my friends, the lion illusion uh, withers and it disappears like the sun at dawn driving away the darkness. This is the way of righteousness. It's the straight and narrow in the mind of Christ. You partake of that tree of life. Then I love this in verse 31, Jesus said to the chief priest that the tax gatherers and harlots will get into the kingdom of God before you do. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you didn't believe him. So here again, he said, John came to you in the way of righteousness. It's all about this way. And we're gonna get more into that. You must understand the way the three days. I love the story of Saul. If you uh, look in Acts 9, uh, Saul is persecuting uh, any he found belonging to the way. And then it goes on to say uh, that he started to have a change of mind, if you will. Uh, in verse 2, it says, uh, while he was on the way to Damascus, a light knocks him from his horse. This is the lower animal. You must fall to rise. Many people are too full of the fruit of the tree of good and evil to eat of the tree of life. Pride is a high tower. You must climb down. You must die before you die. And then in verse 11, uh, the Lord said to him, go to the street called straight. Praise God. That's the straight and narrow. And inquire at the house of Judas. Now here, Judas has, again, two meanings. It can mean the praised one or people, which meant at that time an entrance door. And both of these work beautifully. 
And then Ananias said to Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the way, sent me that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So after three days, Saul, without sight, our food, our water, he arose and was baptized. Praise God. Three days without sight, he arose and was baptized. My friends, you must kill the beast. Get off that lower animal mind and thinking. Raise the chrism up the 33 vertebrae to the hypothalamus where it sits for three days and is raised to the pineal where you meet God face to face. So why must we understand this? It is the salvation of the individual soul. It is the salvation of the world. There are young men and women all around the world ready to kill and die because some old book tells them to kill the infidel. Some, uh, pompous, hateful, old leader tells them they're killing in the name of God, in the name of patriotism. It is nothing more than greed and hate and the evil spirit. If these soldiers would take time to get to know each other, they would see they are the same and they would love each other. But there is good news. The man with a pitcher of water has entered his house. We have reached the end of the dark season. Light and knowledge has broken forth. People all around the world are communicating and realizing we are not the problem and we are bringing notice today to the dark system we don't care what you call yourself we don't care what you dress like don't you think we see right through you we can read your energy and we cast you out you foul spirit in the name of Jesus love is our religion love will reign supreme Asha is my friends i'm going to put up a link to my video sacred secretion learn this know this understand this and know i love you i love you i love you